You'll change your name or change your mind And leave this fucked up place behind But I'll know I'll know I'll know So today's video is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. I don't typically talk about stuff like this, or at least in like great detail or length. I like to keep things light and fun, but for whatever reason, something kind of triggered in my brain to really fixate on this particular topic like i it's been racking the inside of my brain for like the past couple of days like it's been an ongoing thing for me and i really think that making a video is kind of gonna just get it out of my system a little bit because i don't know why i'm so fascinated by this entire story and it's like i feel sadness i feel uneasy easy it's just it's it's a mixture of emotions and it's very intriguing to me if that makes sense now i'm not a big true crime person personally i had like a little bit of a true crime binge like a few years ago and then i watched so many true crime youtube videos that i started creeping myself out and i had to stop watching it because when it gets to a point where you are sitting in your room and you are terrified that somebody's going to burst through your door and kidnap you maybe that's a sign that you should probably stop consuming that kind of content yeah today i wanted to talk about a song that i have heard semi-recently for the first time in like a really long time and it's just it has such a deep and dark meaning behind it and i just want to go into detail about it just for the sake of a video i don't know who knows why i like i said i i really feel like this is going to get it out of my system so i can move on with my life because this is like i said it's it's been racking the back of my brain for this last couple of days and it's honestly driving me crazy all right also i have a script so i'm going to be reading a script so i'm not going to be giving like prolonged eye contact for this entire video. I don't think I give eye contact in my videos that much anyway. We're gonna be talking about Christmas Kids by Roar. So who's Roar? Roar, according to Last FM, is the art pop project of a singer and multi-instrumentalist Owen Evans from Phoenix, Arizona. So in 2010, they actually debuted with their EP, I Can't Handle Change, which I know you heard on TikTok. And um, their most popular songs from this EP are their title track, I Can't Handle Change, and Christmas Kids, which is, again, what we're gonna be talking about today. So this is gonna be a bit more of a serious video due to the themes that we are going to be discussing. This is a trigger warning for domestic violence and abusive relationships overall. Yeah, I kind of just wanted to make this video out of morbid curiosity, honestly. Um, I will be having a little bit of like a joking tone during some of the lighter details about the video, but otherwise I will approach this topic with a level of grace so that way I can respect the people that were involved as well as people who are going through similar situations, whether it had been in the past, present, whatever. Point is, we're keeping it classy, having some decorum. I would also like to put the number of a domestic violence hotline on the screen and it'll also be in the description of this video. I know that, that doing that doesn't really do much, but I don't want to talk about stuff like this and like not link some sort of resource that helps people out. So the number is 800-799-7233. I remember hearing Christmas Kids when I first heard their song, I Can't Handle Change back in 2018. I, um, I kind of brushed it off during my initial listen and I didn't really think much of it for years until recently when I saw a trend on TikTok using the song. Again, I didn't really think much of it until I read the comments on that TikTok. Apparently somebody had alluded to the darker themes that were present in the song. And so I decided to put on my ugly Sherlock Holmes hat and put a pipe in my mouth and I decided to go on genius.com. In the description of the track, it states that Christmas Kids is about an abusive relationship between Phil Spector and Ronnie Spector. And those names like triggered something in my walnut brain because I, had definitely heard of those names before. Like I knew I had heard those names before and I was vaguely aware of what went down. Like I knew something sinister was going on, but I couldn't quite place like why. And so I decided to look into them further. I got all the information that I needed. And so here I am to present the facts to you on a silver platter. Run at my dear, don't ever disappear. Do what you want as 
long as you stay here. Born Veronica Bennett, Ronnie Spector, along with her sister and cousin Estelle and Nedra, formed a girl group called the Ronettes in the early 1960s. For a while, they were signed with a record label and steadily performed gigs, but they did not find the success that they were looking for, not until they auditioned for Phil Spector. Now here's the thing about this old fart, Phil Spector. If Phil was anything, he was a damn good producer, okay? Like, he produced music for big names like Tina Turner and the Beatles. Apparently Ronnie stood out to Phil because in her words, I had a perfect voice. It wasn't a black voice. It wasn't a white voice. It was just a great voice. His whole life has been me. Whew. So after that, it was game over, basically. GG's. They were signed immediately and skyrocketed to fame. They had hits like Be My Baby, which is a phenomenal song, by the way. I'll make you happy, baby. Just wait and see. Ah! Such a good song. I would like to mention that Phil and Ronnie had started having a relationship around this time, despite Phil being married at the time. Ronnie was not aware of the marriage, by the way. Also, Ronnie was a minor and Phil was 24. So, you know, crazy stuff, man. The Ronettes got so popular that they even had the opportunity to perform with the Beatles in the Rolling Stones. While writing this script, I had noticed that a lot of these groups have the word the in front of the names the Ronettes, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. I don't know why I wanted to point that out, but I... The chaos of the limelight settled when 1966 rolled around. Phil, he was in his flop era. Womp womp. Due to taking L after L, he decided to retire. Uh, the end of his career pretty much gave the Ronettes the same fate, so they dissolved as well. While working together, Ronnie and Phil eventually got married in 1968, which was apparently two years after Phil had dissolved his previous marriage. Shortly after Phil and Ronnie's marriage, they had adopted a son. During this time, Phil's mental health was declining and he was exhibiting symptoms of bipolar disorder and depression due to his forced retirement. The second that these two got hitched was the second that Ronnie lost her freedom. She was forbidden from performing and continuing to pursue her music career, you know, probably out of fear of her being more successful than him, but hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. As a way to combat the chance for her to cheat on him, she was cut off from communicating to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. She was also subjected to psychological abuse. Barbed wire was put around their Beverly Hills mansion along with guard dogs. I'm not fucking kidding. Her home literally became a prison. Phil was so deranged that he had confiscated Ronnie's shoes so that way she couldn't escape. Two years after adopting their first child, Phil surprised Ronnie on Christmas day with twins. Twins. How the hell did he manage to adopt twins? Not one child, but two. They really just gave orphans to anybody back then, huh? When recalling what happened that Christmas morning, Ronnie said on like, I think the daily news or something, and I quote, no one wants live children as a surprise, especially twins. Whatever. <laughs> Apparently the twins were supposed to be Phil's way of fixing their marriage or like, you know, giving some spark back into once what they once had. I'm not sure what the thought process behind that was, but you know, I'm, I'm letting it go. Maybe no, there was no thought process. I don't know, maybe it's, it came to him in a dream. Who knows? And so that's where Christmas Kids gets its title from. In the song, Roar sings, the Christmas kids were nothing but a gift and love is a tower where all of us can live. Phil clearly had a warped version of a happy family in his mind. He was aiming for full house, but he ended up being Mother Gothel and fully committed to the Tangle plot instead. If you think this is dark, just wait, cause it's about to get darker. So in Ronnie's memoir, she states that Phil had a gold coffin with a glass lid that he would threaten to display her corpse in if she ever tried to leave him. When she was able to go out, which was not often, 
She had to drive with a life-size doll that looked just like Phil. Ronnie drank her problems away and managed to use her AA meetings as her only way of temporarily escaping that nightmare mansion. Can you imagine turning to alcoholism as an escape? I didn't forget about their adopted children, no. Unfortunately, the kids were not free from the torment either. Apparently, they were locked in their rooms for prolonged periods at a time with buckets in the corner of their rooms as toilets. Like, my heart hurts for them, aches. As of today, they all seem to be alive and in their 50s. None of them are really in the spotlight or like, you know, have any personal details publicly available, which is, I do not blame them for at all. Like that must've been traumatic. It's 1972 and Ronnie has a small window to escape, figuratively and literally, because she actually had to escape through a broken window just to get out of the house. With the help of her mother, she had narrowly managed to be free. The divorce left Ronnie with next to nothing because her life was in jeopardy if she took anything from Phil. He had allegedly threatened to hire a hitman if Ronnie did not forfeit future record earnings, as well as allegedly pulling a gun on her multiple times if she did not give Phil full custody of their kids. Ronnie tried to rebuild her career and actually kept Phil's last name as a way to show some credibility in the music industry. But unfortunately, Phil had practically blacklisted Ronnie and even barred her from being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Despite his pettiness though, the Ronettes ended up in the Hall of Fame anyway, but that didn't happen until 2007. As much of a loser as Phil was, he just kept losing because the Rana sued his unwashed ass for all that they were worth. He ended up having to pay Ronnie $1 million in royalties after their lengthy trial, which went on for like 10 years, by the way. It was insane. Ronnie ended up remarrying, having kids, and releasing her memoir, but not before passing away from lung cancer in 2022. May she rest in peace. Ronnie should not be remembered for her unfortunate personal life. She was a rock icon and a trailblazer for young women in the 1960s. And the Ronettes are just, they're, they're a staple in music. Also, their music's pretty good. I listened to their music while I was writing this script and um, it's good shit. Anyway, I hate to burst your bubble, but we have to pivot back to Phil because things just get worse for him. So. After his divorce from Ronnie, he dipped his crusty little toes back into the music industry and produced some hits like the Beatles last album, whatever it was called. I don't, I don't know who cares. And a few solo projects from former Beatles members after the split. He simultaneously produced poor charting music for the former Beatles members and also performed some of their best music. Like it was, it was a real hit or miss kind of situation for him. So. After a near death car accident in the 70s, Phil kind of just kept to himself for a bit. Apparently he had to undergo major surgeries to his face and head, which explains the recent pictures of him. He is one ugly old man. World, you shouldn't make fun of his appearance. Why not? He looks ugly, so I said he's ugly. That's not bullying. That's an astute observation. That was a Boondocks reference, if you didn't catch that. Anyway, after all of that, he opened up a new studio and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Who cares? Seriously, I'm getting bored while typing this. It is 1.30 a.m. and I'm regurgitating pointless facts about a dude that is a sore sight for eyes. I'm too pretty to be doing this. Is she wrong? Let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? In 2003, Phil Spector shot and killed Lana Clarkson, who was an actress at the time. Phil chalked it up to be an accidental suicide even though his driver had called 911 and quoted that Phil said, I think I killed someone. Which one is it, Phil? The murder trial began in 2007 and had a mistrial, then restarted in 2008, and then he was charged with second degree murder. What's interesting about the trial is that at the time, Ronnie was shocked when she heard the news about what happened. Despite the literal death threats, she could not have actually believed that Phil was capable of actually following through with the threats. Listen, I'm not trying to judge her or anything, but if somebody was comfortable enough to wave a gun around me with the intent to hurt me, maybe they're capable of actually pulling the trigger. But hey, that's just me. I don't wave guns around people's faces for fun, so. 
What do I know? After 18 days, Phil Spector was found guilty on all charges and was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison. It's poetic, truthfully. After all those years that Ronnie was behind bars in her own home, mind you, her oppressor got the same fate. Sounds like something straight out of Greek mythology, honestly. I'm sure there's like some story in there about karma in their catalog. I don't know them off the top of my head like that, but let me know if there's a Greek mythology story that perfectly mirrors this situation. Anyway, Phil eventually died in 2021 due to the virus that shall not be named because YouTube doesn't like it when you name drop them. Ronnie actually made a tribute post for Phil when the news broke of Phil's passing. She recognized that he was a lousy husband, but can't help but smile at the music that they made together. I'm not going to psychoanalyze her statement because she's dead now, so who knows if she actually meant what she said, but it warms my heart a little bit that she's at least able to appreciate the good that came from that time of her life. You know, a lot of people who suffer through traumatic events are not able to function around things that could trigger that pain. Seeing Ronnie heal the best that she could makes me believe that she was able to free herself from that pain and she could live the rest of her life the best that she could. And I think that's really great because also in her memoir, she even stated that she wrote it as kind of like a warning for women out there that are in these abusive relationships. And I think that's really powerful that she was able to use what she went through as a way to support other people who are in similar situations. Just an overall great woman. Despite my personal feelings towards this thing that's allegedly supposed to be a human being, Film Spectre was responsible for a lot of the major hits in the 60s and the 70s, whether I like it or not. We have to give him at least that, I guess. Okay, enough praise. Let me get back to being mean. Look at him. Oh my God, he looks like a raisin. Holy shit. Look at these, like what the hell is that? Did he get electrocuted on the way in the doors? This just did not age gracefully at all. Good Lord, jump scare. <laughs> oh my God, look, there's Phil Spector and Family Guy apparently. This fucking guy. No, I don't feel bad about saying all those things to him. Did he suffer through a lot of things mentally? Yes, but was he also horrible? Yes. So I don't feel bad for making fun of his ugly ass wigs. I've been droning on for so long that I forgot what brought me to this topic in the first place. Christmas kids, let's talk about it. This song is so unsettling because the context behind it is so dark. It's not subtle about the context about it either. Like Roy name drops Ronnie and Phil several times throughout the song. For crying out loud, their EP cover is literally Phil and Ronnie. The repetition in the song can be a symbolism, I think, for the never ending torment that Ronnie had to endure while being with Phil, but that could also just be me reading into things. Listen, this is not a lyric breakdown, all right? This isn't genius.com. Do I look like I'm in a yellow room right now? Actually, I heard, I saw behind the scenes of Genius. It's not a yellow room. I always thought it was a yellow room. No, it's just a yellow backdrop. That's crazy. A lot of like internet shows like that is just like a backdrop and it's not an actual room. That blew my mind. I don't know why I always assumed it was a yellow room. Sorry, off track. Let's, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, let's get back to the, let's get back to So the reason why I felt like I needed to make this video is because I heard Christmas kids on TikTok recently because there's a trend that's sort of going around right now. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's like a really popular trend, but it's, it's a trend. I personally haven't seen it a lot on my For You page because yeah, I just haven't. So I don't know how popular it is, but people are using the chorus of the song as a way to do like an old me versus new me kind of thing. And I've seen trends like this dozens of times. It's nothing new. Any song can be victim of that. I've also seen some light criticism towards people who use the song outside of the purpose that it was intended for. Some people find that it's strange that people are using a song about somebody's abuse in a completely different context. I personally don't see that much of an issue because it really only uses the chorus of the song, which is honestly pretty vague on its own. I don't know. I personally don't look into meanings behind the songs that I randomly hear on TikTok because seriously, who has time for that? Like, I really don't blame people for using the song without researching further. Truthfully, I'm on the fence about the whole thing. I definitely see both sides of the argument like Chanel. Do I find the videos a little bit unsettling sometimes? Yeah, 
but that's because I've been thinking about Ronnie and Phil nonstop for the past 48 hours straight and I'm actually starting to lose my mind. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's a little bit different for me. But like I said, the chorus doesn't specify anything on its own so I can see how people miss the intended purpose of the song. I don't know, I'm not gonna go off on people who use the song for any reason outside of the context because seriously, like who has time for that? I personally will not be using the song for any TikToks other than the TikTok that I will probably post that will be promoting this video. Hi TikTok! Uh, with that being said, I think I've covered all that I needed to about this song. Christmas Kiss is a really good song, despite the heavy baggage that comes with it, and Roar is an exceptional band that deserves more roses than they are given. I've been a casual fan since 2018 because I think I like randomly heard their song on my Discover. Um, I can't handle change. I like the song, not the EP, but yeah, I heard the song in my Discover one day and I just fell in love with it because I just, I love just songs that are experimental, that is a little bit different. Honestly, I'm happy that Roar is getting more popular. I've seen comments on like Instagram, on Roar's uh, Instagram page. I've been seeing people being like, oh, these new TikTok fans don't know anything about Roar. Like blah, 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 blah. All they know is Christmas kids and I can't handle change. Pretentious much? Like pff, relax, it's, it's never that serious. I've gone on a, tangent about shit like this on stream. I stream on Twitch, by the way. Um, I've gone on tangents about this, like on and on and on and on. I don't like people who gatekeep and I don't like people who stop liking songs just because they overheard the song too much, whether it be like, you know, so if it's overplayed on the radio or just overplayed on TikTok, whatever your excuse is, th those are like my two music pet peeves. A song doesn't ma automatically become bad because you heard it too many times. Back to Roar. Go listen to their latest album, Diamond Destroyer of Death. So good. Paralyzed and I'm Not Gonna Help You are really, really good. Like. I think they're my favorites. Also, No One Thinks About You is really good. And so is Copperfield. You get my point. Roar's great and you should listen to them. Thank you so much for listening to my info dump. This video is a lot different from what I usually do. And I hope that you at least found the story to be a little bit interesting. Like I said, I don't, did I say this? I don't even know if I said this at the beginning of the video, but true crime, not gonna be doing a lot of true crime. This might be the only one I ever do. So if you're like, oh, true crime, you're really, you, 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 I love true crime. Do more true crime. It's probably not gonna happen. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I find the whole genre to be just ick. Talking about a bunch of like dead people, that doesn't make me feel good. So I'm not gonna do that. But maybe the next time I info dump on you, it's gonna be a, a, a less gruesome topic. I don't know. I I enjoyed researching and like just going deep on this. I mean, it wasn't like super deep, but you know, it's the deepest that I could go. That's what he said. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go listen to Be My Baby. It's a really good song. I'll make you happy, baby. Just wait and see. Also, the song that was playing in the background throughout this entire video, that was me. I recorded that song. I went to the nines for this video. I don't know why I felt the need to make a cover. I think it's because I really wanted to display the song, but it's like, I can't just play the song in the video. You know, that's, that's much. So. I wanted to record a little cover. I'm probably gonna put it on SoundCloud, maybe. So if you wanna listen to it without like me talking, then go nuts. If you liked this video, give it a like or don't. I don't care. If you like me and you would like to see more of me, then you should subscribe or don't. Don't really care. All of my socials will be down in the description if you would like to find me elsewhere. Like I said, I stream on Twitch. That's pretty much the only, only other thing that I do. I also I've been doing the Cartoon Network Toon Showdown thing that they've been doing on their Instagram story. Um, I've been covering that on TikTok because I have nothing better to do with my life other than to talk about cartoons. Maybe I'll make a video about cartoons. I don't know. I, I would love to do that. Cartoons, anime, I would love to do that. I just don't feel like people would watch that. But honestly, I need to stop caring about what you guys think because this is the All About Me show and I, I'm the only one that matters here. So maybe I should just do what I want and I'll see you when I see you. Mwah. Appearing unsightly with devils inside me. If you ever try to